Hello, dear friends. Today, I would like to talk about high blood pressure. Why high blood pressure? Because it is currently the leading cause of death in the world. It is very important to note that many people often take this disease lightly. For example, if we tell the average person that a single cancer cell has been found in his or her body, no matter how stupid he or she is, the person will start to worry, panic, to go to all the doctors because he or she understands that this small cancer cell is directly linked to the risk of death. There are too many disturbing images associated with this disease in a person's mind. But the situation is much worse when it comes to hypertensive disease. At the moment, cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death in the world, with oncological diseases in a second place. This means that you are much more likely to die of coronary heart disease than cancer. But for some reason, everyone is afraid of cancer, and for some reason, everyone is so nonchalant about high blood pressure. And the increase in arterial blood pressure is precisely the reason why people develop cardiovascular disease. The interesting thing is that cardiovascular disease, particularly arterial hypertension, is very easy to control. At the moment, there are a large number of drugs that can usually solve any problem with blood pressure. But the examples seem to indicate that of the half of people who are aware of their diagnosis of arterial hypertension or hypertension, only 50% start treatment. Of the 50% who do start treatment, about 50% drop out within the first few months because it's too boring to take medication. Of the people who stay on medication, half take it incorrectly, meaning they take it as they like instead of as prescribed by the doctor. If the doctor has chosen the right treatment for them at all, only half of them are cured properly. This means that only a very small percentage of patients are treated correctly. So many people are digging their own grave, that is, they have in their hands a relatively inexpensive tool to regulate their pressure. And on the other hand, there is the fact of culpable negligence in relation to their own health. My aim today is to explain what hypertension threatens us with. Let's take a closer look at the problem. When you have chronic high blood pressure, your heart is the first to suffer. With high blood pressure, the heart experiences a load, pressure. As a result, the heart muscle thickens, the blood supply deteriorates, and as a result, heart failure may develop. And if we add to this the lesion of the coronary arteries, that is, the arteries that feed the heart muscle, then the high pressure in the coronary arteries causes disorders, their inner surface is damaged, atherosclerotic plaques begin to deposit on it, fibrous processes develop, the arterial lumen narrows, which in turn leads to a heart attack. The effects of increased pressure on the heart are therefore hypertrophy with coronary artery disease, the development of scarring, myocardial infarction, and, as a consequence, heart failure. The effects of hypertension on the blood vessels can be of two types. Firstly, the increased blood pressure puts enormous strain on the vessel wall, causing it to crack and accumulate various harmful deposits, leading to atherosclerotic plaques. Atherosclerotic plaques clog the vessels and cause reduced blood flow to organs such as kidneys, brain, or heart. For example, if blood flow to the kidneys is reduced, pressure rises, and this can lead to kidney failure. If the blood supply to the brain is disturbed, a stroke occurs and a person becomes an invalid or a cabbage who does not understand anything, and it is not yet known which is worse. Another side effect of the effect of blood pressure on the vessels, especially those of the brain, is the development of dementia. The fact is that when arterial pressure affects small vessels and capillaries, they are damaged. So-called ischemic brain lesions occur, and such a person simply complains about his or her memory, then his or her mental abilities begin to decline, and eventually he or she goes gaga. This can also be caused by high blood pressure. I am deeply convinced that insanity is much worse than being confined to a wheelchair. What other changes occur in the blood vessels? High stress on the vessel wall can lead to aneurysms. Aneurysms are vasodilatations, like a sac that can burst at some unforeseen point. If it is an abdominal aortic aneurysm, the protrusions are grim. If the person is not on the operating table, he or she will die within a few minutes from massive bleeding. The aorta simply bursts and the blood pours into the abdomen. It is painful, unpleasant, and even deadly. And if an aneurysm ruptures in the brain, 
the result is a hemorrhagic stroke, which can happen at a very young age. It is a terrible stroke that often leads to death or disability. What diseases can affect the kidneys? In hypertension, the glomeruli die very easily. The glomerulus is the structure where blood is filtered and urine is formed. The longer the kidney has high blood pressure, the worse it is for glomeruli. Gradually, the glomeruli are replaced by connective tissue. Glomerulosclerosis develops and the kidneys stop working. Another side effect of high blood pressure is sexual dysfunction in men. This is an effect on the vessels that supply blood to the penis. As a result, these vessels become narrow and fragile, and their lumen cannot be widened by anything, and no Viagra will help. This is the high road to impotence. Eye damage is another important point. The eyes also have a choroid, and the vessels in the eyes are very sensitive to high blood pressure. When blood pressure is chronically high, these vessels are damaged. They can no longer carry as much blood as needed to the retina of the eye, and as a result, a person loses his or her sight. One more thing. Atrophy of the optic nerve can occur because the nerve also needs to be nourished. Nourishment comes through the arteries, so a reduction in blood flow can lead to blindness. Isn't that a lot to be scared of? But the most interesting thing is that not all of these things happen at the same time. For example, if a person, unfortunately, has a hemorrhagic stroke or a heart attack, it does not mean that it happened literally in a second, that the person was healthy just a second ago and suddenly something exploded in him or her. No, it is all built up over years and decades, and the worst part is that it could all have been prevented. But, as we often say, if a person has high blood pressure and does not feel it, then there is no need to treat it. Very interesting psychology. And when an accident happens, he or she screams and asks for help. Drugs are expensive, and rehabilitation after a stroke is difficult. Help yourself. This can be done in a very simple way. You should start worrying about your health if your blood pressure is higher than 130 over 80. According to data accepted by the American Heart Association in 2017, 130 over 80 is considered the beginning of hypertension. This means that if a person's blood pressure is 131 over 80 or 130 over 81, he or she already has high blood pressure, which is the first stage. Previously, a blood pressure of 140 over 90 was considered hypertension. Why have the figures been revised from 140 to 130 and from 90 to 80? Numerous studies have shown that the likelihood of all the side effects of high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks and strokes, kidney damage and loss of sight, is doubled. For example, if a person's blood pressure rises from 130 to 140, the likelihood of having a stroke doubles, and so on. That is why it has been decided to tighten up the rules on blood pressure control. A few words on how to measure your blood pressure correctly. It doesn't matter whether you have a mechanical, electric, or semi-automatic tonometer. The cuff should be placed on the upper arm, and the upper arm should be approximately at the level of the heart. You should be sitting relaxed, leaning back in your chair. Your arms should be relaxed and both legs should be on the floor, that is, your feet should not be crossed. Before that, you should sit or lie down for about five minutes. No physical activity for five minutes. It is also important to measure the pressure with an empty bladder, so do not drink coffee beforehand. Here are the simple rules. It is necessary to measure the pressure twice. It is always the second measurement that determines the indicators. Also, the depth of the arteries may be different in two arms, so you should concentrate on the arm where the blood pressure is higher. Sometimes it happens that when you come to the doctor's office, your blood pressure goes up. You cannot control it, you're just nervous. Then, you need to get a blood pressure monitor to take home. If you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure at the doctor's, all you need to do is monitor your blood pressure at home during the week in a relaxed atmosphere at the same times in the morning and evening. For example, at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Even better, of course, is to do it at 8 in the morning than at noon and again in the evening. Even better is to have the pressure checked daily. There is a device that inflates the cuff itself every 15 or 30 minutes. It measures the pressure during the day when you are working, when you are sleeping, when you are nervous, when you are resting, and then it creates curves that help the doctor to choose the appropriate therapy and prescribe medication. 
For example, they have established the sad fact that you have high blood pressure. What do you do now? There are two options. The first way is to take pills immediately. This is inevitable if your blood pressure is over 150. If your blood pressure is over 150 over 100, you should probably think about taking pills, especially if the pressure is 160 over 100 or 160 over 120, if there are uncontrolled blood pressure attacks. In other cases, you need to understand the causes of high blood pressure. I'm not going to say anything new here and tell you that I have suddenly understood what causes high blood pressure. The causes of 95% of cases of arterial hypertension or hypertension are unknown, and only 5-10% to are secondary, that is, symptomatic. I will now explain the differences. In primary hypertension, all the person's organs are healthy and the pressure is elevated. This is called primary or essential hypertension. Secondary hypertension is a symptom of a disease. This can be a tumor in the adrenal gland, or a kidney disease that affects the blood vessels in the kidneys, or the kidney parenchyma, such as renal arteriostenosis. This can be scalar hypertension, the death of part of the kidney due to chronic pyelonephritis. For example, a tumor of the adrenal gland can secrete cortisol. This would be Cushing's syndrome. Another type of tumor is pheochromocytoma, a tumor that produces norepinephrine and epinephrine. Other adrenal tumors can cause Kahn's syndrome, where fluid is retained in the body. Pituitary tumors can be associated with the overproduction of mineral corticoids, as can congenital coarctation of the aorta. There may be thyroid disease. These are the so-called symptomatic hypertension, and it is important that the patient sees a good doctor who can distinguish symptomatic hypertension from non-symptomatic hypertension. Once it has been established that the patient has primary hypertension and that the pressure is such that he or she can do without medication, the next step is to look at a table that calculates the likelihood of developing cardiovascular disease over a 10-year period. Cardiovascular disease is defined as a heart attack or stroke. The table takes into account your age, sex, weight, blood pressure, cholesterol level, whether you have diabetes, whether you smoke, or whether you take medication to treat high blood pressure. When you fill in this table, based on statistics from the internet, you are given a percentage chance of developing one of these diseases within 10 years. If your score is less than 10, then your chances of getting a terrible cardiovascular disease are less than 10%, and you can safely go without medication for the first six months, or maybe you won't need it at all. Now, let me tell you about a method that can help you avoid taking drugs to treat high blood pressure. So if this table allows us to act without drugs, these are the recommendations of the American Heart Association, then we can only use three main tools. The first tool, oddly enough, is weight loss. You can also easily calculate your body mass index. There is a calculator that takes your height and weight into account. If you're overweight, the good news is that if you lose 8 kilos, your systolic pressure will drop by 10 to 12 millimeters of mercury. So if your pressure was 140, for example, and you lost 8 kilos, your pressure will be 130. And that's it. No need for medication. The second way is a practice that helps to do without medication. This is physical exercise, aerobic exercise. These are endurance sports, regular walking, swimming, running, skating, and skiing. All this is considered aerobic exercise, even weights in the gym, but dynamic, that is, those where you have to lift weights, either your own or small loads with the maximum number of repetitions. Regular exercise can lower blood pressure by 8 millimeters of mercury. Based on the initial data, say 130, we lose weight, we want to lower the pressure further, and we add physical activity. And the third way that gives us a great chance of defeating hypertension is diet. Diet is mainly about limiting the amount of salt we eat. Strict recommendations include no more than 2 grams of salt per day. However, salt, the so-called hidden salt, is present in a very large number of products. You can say that you don't eat salt, but if you eat sausages, black bread, tinned food, herring, and so on, there is more than enough salt. So if you don't want your blood pressure to go up, cut out salt completely and avoid foods that are high in salt. One thing I would like to point out is that it is easy to get carried away. If you are serious about exercising, especially in the summer, or if you like to take a steam bath, you can lose a lot of sodium through sweating. 
However, for the average person with normal physical activity, this risk is minimal. It is also a good idea to include potassium-rich foods in your diet. You can check the potassium content of products by looking at the table. These can be ordinary baked potatoes, bananas, dried apricots, persimmons, and apples. Here are three principles for lowering blood pressure. Weight loss, exercise, and diet. Of course, you have to remember that a person has to be healthy to be able to do these physical activities, because if everything is already very bad and you're overweight and your joints hurt and your back hurts, then, of course, everything is more difficult. You should still take blood pressure pills and try to lose weight first, and then choose a type of physical activity that is suitable for you. But there is no other way. The other way is just to start taking blood pressure pills, and if you've already started taking them and don't want to do anything else, you have to understand that this is for life. Don't be afraid. You're doing this for yourself, to maintain the quality of your life. Not to sink into dotage, not to become disabled, not to become a burden to yourself and your loved ones. It's all in your power. Now, there are many drugs that control blood pressure perfectly, but blood pressure really does need to be kept within certain limits. There is no such thing as high blood pressure being normal at a certain age. It is possible to control high blood pressure without medication. The first is your will as an awareness, a reflection of what can happen. If you don't treat your high blood pressure, it will eventually kill you. And if you decide to treat it, you have to make a choice. Either you treat it with pills and then follow the doctor's prescription, or you treat it without medication. In any case, you need to see a doctor to have an assessment to see if physical activity is harmful to you, how much it should be, and what your chances are of being able to do without medication in general. The sooner you do this, the better. If your blood pressure exceeds 130 over 80 for a whole week, go to the doctor. Always there for you, Dr. PopMed.